Okay, so being scientists, we love equations. So That's let's, right. let's have a look at the rocket equation. Now, if, you'd, if you're the sort of person who faints at the sight of the equation, just feel free to skip over this. And, and look, we're not actually talking about the equation in detail. It's really that our change in speed, which is what we want, that is thrust. This yep. is the thing that makes us go up. Yep. It's based on our speed coming in and really how much mass we're burning. So this is um, our final mass versus our initial mass. So how much mass are we carrying and how much mass are we ending up with? So you get a large velocity, you're going to start off burning an enormous amount of mass, most of which gets burnt. Exactly. Most of which is fuel. That's right. And you have a tiny mass at the end, and you want that fuel that you're burning to have as much energy coming out as possible, and that will give you a big, this is called a delta V, that's the Greek letter capital delta. Yep. And delta V is a change in velocity, and that determines where you can get to in space. Exactly. And so it's all about maximizing this relative to this mass, right? Because if we want to get a really fast speed, we're need, going to need to adjust how much mass we are. If we only need a little speed, we probably don't need to carry as much mass. And this is really what governs space. A lot of people talk about the rocket equation and, and how principal it is. And it's really, we have our mass, which is our weight. And if we go back to our diagram, most of that weight is fuel. Yes. And so fuel is really what dictates the rocket equation. So the highest possible delta V to go to the most exotic places in the universe, what you'd want is the rocket that when launched was enormously heavy, but only a very, very small mass actually is left at the end. That's right. And you'd want to use the best fuel possible. That's right. And if you do that, you're going to get the highest possible delta V, which you might need to go somewhere exotic. Exactly. And so it's all about maximizing those ratios. So whether it's the right ratio of fuel to oxygen, how big it is, how much you can carry, where you can get with it. Now, we talked earlier um, about how much energy you need to escape Earth's orbit and get to the moon's orbit and even get further. Mm -hmm. So in rough energy costs, you need about eight kilometers per second to get from the ground to Earth orbit. Yes, it's a velocity of eight kilometers per second, which is the orbital velocity. And that's so that would be the delta V, the change in velocity. Exactly. Just to get into low Earth orbit. Now, once you're in low Earth orbit, it's relatively easy. So to go from a low Earth orbit to an orbit that will take you to the moon. About uh, four, so it's a lot less than to getting from the surface, as we saw. Once you're there with potential energy, there's a lot less energy needed to get to the moon. If we want to get from Earth orbit to near an asteroid, somewhere around there, to the moon is a little bit more, to Mars is a little bit further. So yeah. a lot of the work is actually just getting off the ground. The beginning, the first steps are the hardest. That's right. But it's a bit worse than that because, I mean, you can say, right, you can get to Mars for the same energy you get to low Earth orbit. So the yeah. first 500 kilometers and the last million, million kilometers <laughs> is the same. The trouble is that the fuel you need for that has to get through this. Exactly. So and remember to get that high delta V, you'd want to start with a lot of fuel, end up with a little. But if, when you get into low Earth orbit, that little has to be able to get to Mars, that little has to be quite big, because it needs to contain all this rocket to get you to Mars, which means... This has to be more, because you need more mass here yeah. to get you enough speed here. But you've just added more mass, right, Paul? Yeah, so I mean, on each one of these stages, it could be that for every kilogram you need to get up there, you need 10 kilograms of fuel. So to get a one-ton uh, one rocket, you might need eight tons of fuel. But now if you want to get that one ton to Mars, you're going to need eight, 10 tons of fuel in space, which is you need to get 11 kilograms into low Earth orbit, which means you're going to need 110 kilograms on the Earth to get all the way up there. So a little bit of weight up here kills you in the first step. It really does. And so this is becoming kind of the problem with rockets. It's this vicious cycle of where you want to go. So to get relatively to low Earth orbit, is relatively straightforward, right? You know, we obviously do this, we do this a lot, we know what's happening, but the complexities, and this is why, you know, the Saturn V was the, you know, this gigantic rocket, because it had to carry all of the fuel plus, you know, in fact, the, the weight of the astronauts and the equipment of the astronauts is, is relatively small in comparison yes. to get it to the surface of the moon, because yes. it had to carry all of that energy. So most of the Saturn V rocket was there to carry the fuel to get you for this bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it is kind of- imagine, I mean, only like 5% or less of the rocket actually came back. That's right. And so this is kind of this, this grappling of a problem where, depending on where you want to go, you have to add all of that fuel, 
But then you also have to add all the support costs, the, the nozzles, the tanks, and you have to carry it with you. You, you. It doesn't come from it. But it gets even worse than that. And that is, okay, now let's imagine, is what we call payment energy, how much energy we actually get out in terms of these things. Well, all right, we can get four and a half if we can mix methane with oxygen, some of our kerosene, that was the early days, three, solid rocket boosters, three. We're actually not as efficient in the energy needed per weight of this fuel to get it. It's what we call the thrust to weight ratio. This is what one ton of solid rocket fuel would get you three kilometers per second. That's right. So you actually have to add a lot more for that one ton of payload to get up to get to your eight kilometers per second. And this is the same thing we were talking about in the first, uh, when we started this. That's right. A kilogram of fuel could only barely lift a kilogram into space. You can see that the energy needed to get into a near Earth asteroid is more than the energy you get from burning a ton of any of these fuels. And so, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it's okay if you're just trying to get into Earth's orbit, but if you have to carry that fuel with you now, right? Because the original logic was, all right, we won't carry that fuel into space, but now we are carrying that fuel into space. So you need it for go to the next stage to get that, a, an asteroid or the moon or whatever it might be. Exactly. And it's not 100% efficient. Yes. Again, we think that, oh, right, we get a chemical reaction, rocket goes boom, we go fine. No. Solid rockets, we get this why people like it. It's a 96% efficiency. So 96% of the stuff of the weight turns into thrust we get out. And that's what you want. Ideally, you want 100% of the mass you carry ends up being thrust, which is our delta V. Some of these, like hydrogen and oxygen, that stuff that people like, it's only about 83%. That's actually not very good. That means 20% of it is literally dead weight. Though, of course, there's a lot more energy per kilogram in these. So exactly. So pays you back somewhat. So, so there's... This is because you need to cryogenically cool it. You need tanks, exactly. you need coolants, all these, which is wasted mass. So there's a lot of these trade-offs into how efficient the fuel system is, solid rockets being efficient, but you can't really make them in space, they're really heavy, versus things that are more, uh, less efficient, but easier to deal with, and more energy per out. So there's a huge amount of trade-off in terms of the fuel you need, the fuel you want, and the energy you want, depending on where you want to go. So it's not as simple as saying, we're gonna go to the moon. That's it. Well, no, there's just a little bit more to getting to the moon than that. So the fundamental problem is going back to what we were saying right at the beginning, that the energy you get per kilogram in your fuels is not that different from the energy you need per kilogram to put things in space. So you're going to need a lot of kilograms which you can't take with you to carry things up. And that kind of drives the whole complexity here. Like if you're driving your car to Melbourne, I mean, the mass of the car might be one and a half tons, the mass of the petrol might be 100 kilograms. Exactly. That's not these rockets. No, it is the reverse. If it was like that, you'd have a, you know, a five ton car, which four and a half tons of fuel tank and the half a ton for the people on board. Exactly. So this is kind of going to govern really what and how we operate in space. The, the physics, which is all about the orbits, which is really all about the energy of space, right, Paul? All about the potential energy. Yep. That's really what's governed a lot of this principle of how we get into space. Yeah, so it's, it's a kind of a bad coincidence that the uh, um, basically all fuels are combining hydrogen oxygen bonds, and the hydrogen oxygen bond really a certain amount of energy, which is determined by the quantum mechanics of the chemical bond. That's right. And you can't change it. That's right. There are no other fuels out there that are going to be better than this because the, these are two very light, abundant elements, exactly. and you only get a certain you know, roughly 50 megajoules per kilogram, no matter what chemical you do with it, that's set by the laws of chemistry, and that's only barely enough. If you lived on a planet with much less gravity, space travel would be easy. And that's something If we lived on a planet which was much heavier, like if you were a civilization that lived on a super Earth with yep. five times the gravity, then space travel would probably be impossible using chemical fuels. Exactly. So you'd have to have a different way of getting into space. So it, the physics of space really governs what we do in space.